in the last lecture we had talked about the boolean types and the character type and in this lecture we'll start talking a little more formally about the c syntax we'll see what expressions in c are and how they are evaluated so an expression is essentially a denotation of a simple computation we are all familiar with expressions from our high school arithmetic in c every expression has a type uh the types are the kind of types that we have already seen like integer long integer short char and so on the type is always determined at compile time by the compiler for any given expression and the expression evaluates to a value that is the value of the expression and that is generally known only at run time when the expression gets evaluated for example if uh, you look at the expression x plus y where x has the value 3 and y has the value 5 then the value of the expression x plus y will be 8 nothing very unfamiliar about this so an expression in general could be simply a variable for example x or y or uh, whatever variable so a simple variable is also an expression an expression could also be a constant literal such as the number 10 or the number 3.1417 etc etc and uh, the more complicated expressions are formed out of these kinds of simpler expressions by using operators so we are already familiar with some arithmetic operators like plus minus division multiplication and so on every operator has some operands uh, most of the operators that we have seen so far are binary operators which means that they have two operands so in this example x plus y is an expression plus is the operator and x and y are the operands for this expression so let's talk a little bit more about the constant literals of uh, various kinds the integer and floating point constant literals have a familiar notation uh, will not uh, belabor the syntax of these uh, integer and floating point constants they are very familiar to you already there are some examples minus 2 is an integer literal so are 25 and 47 etc so an integer literal essentially is a sequence of digits optionally followed option optionally preceded with a plus or minus sign and here are some examples of floating point literals 5.0 there can be a sign plus or minus minus 10.345 for example and we could also use the familiar exponent notation so for example 3.0e minus 12 is the same as 3.0 into 10 to the power minus 12 these are all floating point literals by default integer literals of this kind have the type int and floating point literals of these kinds have the type double but we can say that uh, a particular integer literal or a floating point literal has a different type as follows so for an integer literal constant if we suffix the letter l then the type is declared to be long rather than the default type int similarly if we suffix u after the literal then the type becomes unsigned int and if we suffix ul then the type becomes unsigned long so for example 5 has type int 45l has the type long and 45ul would have the type unsigned long similarly for a floating point literal if we use f or l as a suffix after the constant then we are forcing it to be of type float or long double respectively remember that the default type for floating point constant literals is double so for example just 5.4 has a type double 5.4f has a type float and 5.4l has a type long double you will be wondering why uh, the type of these constant literals is important uh, as we'll see soon the type of the various components of an expression determines the type of the overall expression and in some cases uh, depending on the type even the value of the expression may change and so therefore it is important to talk about the types of these constant literals as well as uh, any other kinds of components that a expression might have okay uh, we had talked about the character type or the char type in the last lecture you can also have constant of type char remember that characters are uh, stored by their ascii codes inside the machine so 
a character constant is denoted by the character that we wish to use within the single quote character so for example the a within the quotes or c capital c within the quotes etc these are all different uh, constant literals of type character note that such a constant literal denotes an integer of type char and the value of the integer is the ascii code of the character recall that the type char is actually just an integer type of uh, a byte of size 1 byte or 8 bits uh, so these are also actually integers but the integer that uh, this particular constant denotes has the value which is same as the ascii code of the corresponding character a or capital c or phi etc etc so therefore uh, it is important to note that the value of the constant literal phi within quotes is the integer 53 which is the ascii code of uh, the character phi and not phi itself so if we had put no quotes around the character phi then it would have the value phi and of course all such character literals have the type char now there are uh, apart from these usual characters there are certain characters which uh, are not printable or for some other reason uh, cannot be easily denoted in this notation that we have seen so these are denoted using certain escape sequences as they are called for example within quotes within single quote characters backslash followed by n denotes the new line character which is the character corresponding to the enter key on the keyboard similarly backslash t within quotes denotes the tab character and so on uh, if you want to use the backslash character itself then we have to use backslash backslash that is two backslashes within quotes and uh, the single quote character is denoted by a single quote followed by a backslash and then two single quotes so in other words within single quotes backslash quote denotes the single quote character and similarly the double quote character is denoted by uh, backslash double quote within the quote character okay let's uh, move on to operators now and let's begin with arithmetic operators we are already familiar with uh, some of the basic arithmetic operators like plus minus star which stands for multiplication and slash which stands for division etc uh, these are all uh, binary operators that is they have uh, just they have two operands the operators plus and minus can also be used in the unary form that is with just one operand so for example plus x is in in this expression plus x we are using plus as the unary operator plus and similarly minus x is an expression where the unary minus operator is being used uh, of these operators all of them can be used for integer as well as floating point operands but the behavior is slightly different especially in the case of the division operation that is the slash operator in the slash operate with the slash operator the result differs depending on the type of operand so if the operands are integer types then the result of doing the division is the quotient obtained by dividing uh, the two numbers whereas if the two numbers are uh, of floating point kind then the exact value is the one uh, that is the result of the expression so for example 5 plus 5 slash 2 would be 2 because 5 and 2 are integers uh, and therefore 5 slash 2 uh, evaluates to the quotient of the division which is 2 and 5 uh, slash 2.0 5. for example 5.0 slash 2.0 would result in the value 2.5 because in this case the two operands are floating point operands okay there is another uh, operator called the percent operator which is applicable only to integer types and this essentially returns the remainder of the division operation so for example the value of the expression 5 percent 2 would be 1 because if you divide 5 by 2 the quotient is 2 and the remainder is 1 so the 5 percent 2 expression evaluates to the remainder which in this case is 1 okay so so far we have been assuming that the two operands involved in a particular expression are of the same type but in general it is possible that the two operands are of different type so for example what is the value and indeed what is the type of the expression 5/2.0 is the result of type floating point 
with the value 2.5 or is the result an integer with the value 2? So that's the question that we need to answer. And the answer is that in uh, such cases where the two operands for an operator are of different types, then the value of the operand of the lower type is promoted to that of the higher type. This is known as implicit type conversion. We'll discuss what the higher and lower types uh, mean in a minute. Essentially, the higher of the two types is roughly speaking the one which can store a larger set of values. So, for example, uh, the type float would be higher than the type int. So, in this particular example, uh, you see that uh, the two operands are 5 and 2.0. As you know by now, by default, the type of the integer literal 5 is int, whereas that of the floating point literal 2.0 is double. So, now double is a higher type than int and so therefore what is going to happen is that the value 5 is going to get promoted to a double and that will result in the value 5.0 and the result of the operation therefore would also be a double since both the operands are now of the type double and of course the floating point division is going to get used since both the operands are of type double and the answer would be 2.5 of type double. Note that uh, in this implicit type conversion, if one of the operands happens to be, for example, a variable, then it's not the type of the variable that is itself getting changed. So, if we had, uh, uh, in this case, instead of 5 divided by 2.0, if we had 5 divided by x, where x is of type float and the value is uh, 2.0. For example, in this expression 5 divided by 2.0, suppose uh, we had a slightly different expression. Uh, let's say we had an integer variable called x of the, uh, with value 5 and then we had the expression x divided by 2.0, then the type of x would not change as a result of the implicit type conversion, that is x would continue to have the value 5 and the type int, but the value of x as used in this expression, that is what is going to get changed. So, the value will become 5.0 and the type will become a uh, floating point, but let me state it once again, it is not the type of x which is changing, it is only the value of x as used in this expression whose type is being changed. Ok, so let us look at this type hierarchy of higher and lower types. So, as we had said, the, roughly speaking, the, the higher type is one which can hold a larger range of values. So, you can imagine that the type hierarchy is going to look something like this. Long double is the highest type followed by double, then float, then unsigned long, then long, then unsigned int and int. Note that unsigned long does not really hold a larger set of uh, values than long for example, because uh, the only difference is that the unsigned long type does not allow for negative integers, whereas long does allow for negative integers but the largest positive value that can be stored in the type unsigned long is, is larger than the largest integer that can be stored in type long. But still, the language defines the type unsigned long to be higher than the type long. Okay. Now, the types which are smaller than int, which are these types? These are uh, types like short, unsigned short, char and unsigned char. Uh, these are always promoted to type int before being used in, the, in an arithmetic operation. So, for example, if you had uh, two shots, let us say x and y of uh, with values 5 and 2 respectively, then x divided by y in the expression x divided by y, both the values would actually get promoted to the type int and so this would expression would be equivalent to integer 5 divided by integer 2 which would result in an integer value of uh, integer value uh, 2. So, in the expression 5 slash 2.5 if we apply these rules 5 has type int 2.5 has type double. So, the 5 gets promoted to double and so it becomes double 5.0 divided by double 2.5 and therefore, the result is the value 2.0 with type double. Ok, let us now talk about another important notion associated with expressions and operators, that is the notion of precedence and associativity. Now, again this is something that should be familiar to you from your high school arithmetic. As you know, uh, in some expressions, 
we need to use brackets to unambiguously specify the operands for each operator in the expression. And where brackets are not used, as you know, some convention is used to determine which operator will be evaluated first. If you recall, you had the board mass rule from school which says that uh, the precedence is brackets are evaluated first, followed by division, multiplication, addition, and then subtraction. And uh, within uh, the two operators of the same kind, the left to right rule applies, that is the operator at the left is evaluated first. So, the C language defines similar rules for determining how the expression is to be evaluated when uh, the operand for each operator are not clear. So, of the operators that we have seen so far, the three operators star, slash and percent have higher precedence than the other two operators namely plus and minus. Here we are talking only about the binary operators. The unary operators as we will see later later all have higher precedence than all of these binary operators and all all of these five operators associate left to right. What does that mean? Let us uh, take an example to clarify this issue. So, let us consider the expression x minus y into z divided by 10 plus 3. So, the question is uh, what are the operands for these uh, operators which are being used. There are four operators in this expression, the minus, the star, the slash and plus. So, recall that the uh, the precedence of star and slash is higher than that of minus and plus, which means that star and slash are going to be evaluated before the minus and plus. But out of these star and slash, since the associativity for both of them is left to right, therefore, the one which occurs on the left will be evaluated first, which means that the operator star is the one that will get evaluated first, followed by slash and after that minus and then plus because again the associativity of minus and plus is left to right, which essentially means that at the same level, at the same bracketing level, the operator on the left is going to be evaluated first. So, therefore, the evaluation order of these operands is star followed by slash followed by minus followed by plus. And so, therefore, uh, this expression is going to be treated as equivalent to uh, y star z, the whole thing divided by 10, x minus the result of this division and 3 is added to the result of this subtraction. Note that the precedence and associativity rules tell us in what order the different operators within the expression are going to be evaluated, but it does not say in what order the two operands of a particular operator are going to be evaluated. For example, the precedence rules do not tell us whether the expression y is going to be evaluated before the expression y, uh, before the expression z. Now, of course, uh, of the kinds of expressions that we have seen so far, this does not really make any difference, but uh, when we look at ex uh, operators with side effects, we will see that this sometimes may make a difference and therefore, it is uh, important to be clear about this point. Similarly, it is uh, the precedence and the associativity rules do not state whether x is going to be evaluated before this entire expression y star z slash 10. It might be either way. So, we will come back to this point later on when we talk about operators with side effects. Okay. So, we have seen uh, the arithmetic operators now. Let us look at different uh, some other kinds of operators. Uh, relational operators are also another important kind of operators. Relational operators essentially compare two quantities and return a Boolean value that is true or false. Recall that uh, there is no Boolean type in C really and any numeric type can be used as a Boolean type, but these operators will all always result in the type int, int and the result will always be either 0 or 1. Remember that 0 stands for false and any non-zero quantity represents true, but with these operators the result will result if it is true will always be the integer 1. So, these are the relational operators defined by C less than, less than equal to, greater than, greater than equal to, equal to. Now, this is the comparison equality comparison operator which should be distinguished carefully from the single equal operator which is the assignment operator. Note that comparing two quantities in this question does not change any uh, anything, it does not result in modification of any variable and so on. 
whereas the assignment operator does result in the modification of the variable on the left hand side. So, this is different from the assignment operator. We will talk about the assignment operator in more detail slightly later on and this is the not equal to operator. So, the meaning of these things should be clear. Uh, for example, x less than y will result in the value 0 if x is not less than y that is x less than y is false and will result in the value 1 if x is indeed less than y. The precedence of all these operators is lower than that of plus and minus and associativity for all these operators is left to right. Uh, slightly later on we will look at the precedence and associativity table of all the operators that we have seen so far. Okay, <coughs> so the relational operators are essentially useful because they they compare quantities and they let us change the flow of control of the program depending on the result, whether the result is true or false uh, and so on. And in some cases, uh, and, and these are used as the conditions in the if statements and the while statements and so on. In some cases, as we have seen earlier uh, in the example that we saw last time, that of computing whether a number is prime or not, the condition that we might require in an if statement or in a while loop may be more complicated than a single comparison of two quantities. We might want to say that if something holds and something else also holds, then do something, then otherwise do something else and so on and so forth. So, therefore, uh, we need the so called logical operator and again the logical operators are also result in a boolean value that is true or false and in the C language they result in the value 0 or 1 of the type integer. Remember that 0 stands for false and 1 stands for true. And there are three logical operators. We have already seen uh, some of them in action in some of the examples that we saw last time. The logical AND operator is denoted by two ampersand signs without any blanks in between. The logical OR operator is two vertical bars and the logical NOT operator is the exclamation sign. So, uh, we need to see what these operators really mean and uh, in what cases do they produce the value 0 or 1. So, let us uh, uh, discuss that in detail. Okay, so let us see precisely what the value of the expression E1 and E2 would be. Remember that E1 and E2 are any numeric type uh, expression and 0 denotes false and uh, any non-zero quantity uh, denotes true. So, the, the result of the computation E1 and E2 can be described by what, what is known as a truth table. So, there are only four possible values for E1 and E2 in terms of Boolean values. E1 and E2 can be both true or false and so there are four combinations. E1 is true or false, E2 is true or false. Note Remember that true means any non-zero quantity that is even if it has any non-zero value it is considered as true and uh, if it has the value 0 then it is considered as false. So, there are these four combinations possible for the values of even and E2 in terms of uh, their Boolean value and correspondingly the result of the expression E1 and E2 is going to be true or false. So, the expression E1 and E2 is going to be true if and only if both E1 and E2 are true and uh, recall that the value of the expression if it is true is always 1. So, the value of the expression E1 and E2 is going to be 1 if both E1 and E2 are true that is both are non-zero. If any of them is false that is any of them has the value 0 then E1 and E2 is false and so the value of the expression will be 0. Similarly, we can define a truth table for the expression E1 or E2. So, again the four possibilities. So, in this case the expression E1 or E2 is going to be true if either E1 is true or E2 is true or if both of them are true. So, uh, it is going to be false in only one case when both E1 and E2 are false and uh, so, we have a 0 over here and 1 in all the three entries. And similarly, we can talk about the truth table for the NOT operator, which is denoted by the exclamation sign. So, if we have an expression 
not e where e is some other expression uh, then we can also define a truth table the difference is that not is a unary operator and therefore there are only two possibilities for e which are true and false and correspondingly the value of not e is going to be false and true Uh, respectively that is if e is true then not e is false which means it has the value 0 and if e is false then not e has the value true which means that its value is 1 note that uh, if the value of e happens to be 5 that is taken as true and so the value of not e will be 0 but if e happens to be false that is if the value of e is 0 then the result will always be 1 and not any other non zero value for uh, the arithmetic operators that we have seen so far recall that we said uh, that the order in which the two operands are evaluated is uh, not defined by the precedence and associativity rules in the case of the and and or operators uh, on the other hand the language does define the order in which the two operands are evaluated so for both e1 or e2 and e1 and e2 the first operand is evaluated first so for an expression e1 and e2 the program will first evaluate the expression e1 and if e1 happens to be false note that regardless of what the value of e2 is the answer is going to be zero so therefore in the expression e1 and e2 the expression e1 is going to be evaluated first and if it turns out to be false that is zero then the expression e2 will not get evaluated at all and the result of the entire expression will be zero and similarly in e1 or e2 the expression e1 will be evaluated first and if its value turns out to be non zero that is it is true then regardless of what is the value of e2 the answer of the expression e1 or e2 is always going to be true that is one and so therefore if e1 evaluates to true that is non zero then e2 does not get evaluated in this case at all and the value of the entire expression is one e2 will get evaluated in this case only if the expression e1 evaluates to false that is zero and in the case of e1 and e2 the expression e2 will get evaluated only if e1 is evaluated to true that is e1 evaluates to the value true uh, that is any non zero value only then e2 will get evaluated because if e1 turns out to be false then there is no need to evaluate the uh, second operand of the expression uh, this fact is not very significant right now but again as i said earlier once we see expressions with side effects then uh, it will make a difference as to whether or not a particular expression is evaluated because that might result in changes to the values of some variables and uh, therefore this fact is uh, important to remember we'll come back to this when we talk about uh, expressions with side effects okay so here is a complete precedence and associativity table for all the operators that we have seen so far and uh, these operators are in the decreasing order of uh, precedence that is the logical not and the unary plus and the unary minus operators are uh, have the highest precedence and they associate right to left not left to right next higher precedence is that of the star slash and percent operators then plus and minus and then the uh, less than greater than etc oper- relational operators less than less than equal to greater than greater than equal to and below that are the two equality and not equality uh, operators equals and not equals and finally the logical and followed by the logical or and uh, except for the unary operators in this table of the highest precedence the rest all associate left to right so let's now see some examples uh, of expression and uh, see how they are interpreted in accordance with this precedence and associativity table so here is the first example i less than j minus 1 this is the same as i less than within brackets j minus 1 this is because less than has a lower precedence than the minus operator which means that minus will be evaluated first which means that the bracketing is like this Okay, let's look at a slightly more complicated expression this time. This expression is x less than equal to three and y is equal to five minus t or z less than seven. Now the different operators in this expression are less than equal to here and equals minus or less than 
So if you go back to the table, you will see that minus of these operators, the minus operator has the highest precedence, followed by less than and less than equal to, followed by equals, followed by and, followed by or, which means that uh, the operators are going to be evaluated in this order, that is the minus operator is going to get evaluated first, which means that we can straight away put brackets around 5 minus b. Once that is done, the next highest precedence operators are less than equal to and less than. Of these, uh, since the associativity is left to right, the less than equal to operator will get evaluated first. So, x less than equal to 3 is bracketed and then z less than 7 is bracketed and after that the next highest, highest precedence operator is equal to. So, it gets bracketed like this and finally, uh, the AND operator gets evaluated and after that the OR operator gets evaluated. Let's look at uh, yet another example. This kind of expression is commonly used in mathematics to denote that the quantity Y is between the quantities X and Z that is X is less than Y and Y is less than Z. But if you apply the rules that we have just seen so far, we will find that in C this is not true and the expression x less than y less than z is actually not the same as the expression x less than y and y less than z. In fact, uh, if you apply the associativity rule, it is the same as x less than y and the entire thing less than z. So, in this expression, this is uh, x less than y will evaluate to either 0 or 1 depending on uh, whether x is or x is not less than y and then we are comparing z against 0, 0 or 1 which is probably not what was intended. So, in this lecture, we have talked about uh, operators of various kinds. In particular, we have talked about arithmetic operators, relational operators and logical operators. We have also seen what is meant by the precedence and associativity rules for these operators. In the next lecture, we will start with operators with side effects and then go on to formally describe the uh, control statements in C, uh, which we have already been informally introduced to like the if statement and the while statement and so on.